Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Product School webinar. Thanks for joining us today. Just in case you didn't know, Product School teaches product management, coding, data analytics, digital marketing, UX design, and product leadership courses online and are 16 campuses worldwide. On top of that, every week we offer some amazing local product management events and host online webinars, live streams, and Ask Me Anything sessions. Head over to productschool.com after this webinar to check them out. All right, I'm assuming you guys can see me and hear me. Uh, my name is Ishan. Uh, I am currently a co-founder of a San Francisco-based startup. Uh, I've been a product manager over the past seven, seven to eight years. Okay. And let me kind of set it up. Cool. And um, this is my second attempt at recording it, so pardon my ramp up energy here. But the goal of this webinar is to kind of walk you through a framework that I've learn from my mentors and refine over time to help make you know, high quality career decisions um, and really use my story to walk through how you could possibly learn for it. Before we get into it, I want to re really preface it with the fact that um, this is what I have learned and improved over time. This has, this has been beneficial to me um, and there is no um, uh, case where this is something that you should follow. As I said, use this as an input signal and then make your own decision which is best for you um, professionally and, and personally. So with that, let me kind of walk you through uh, how I want to cover the webinar. Would love to keep it uh, kind of short, around 15 minutes and kind of mostly kind of structured around four sections. First, an introduction, introduction on the, on the goals, my background, um, an introduction to the, uh, to, uh, to the concept of the North Star framework. Next is dig deeper into what I mean by the North Star framework. Um, third is talk to you about how I thought about kind of small, small startups, mid-stage companies, kind of large mature public companies and then kind of end up with, uh, with a quick summary of kind of key points that you could kind of use, add to a repertoire, repertoire of mental models and kind of, kind of heuristics to help kind of better make career decisions for yourself. So with that, let me kind of, uh, let's, get started. let's get started. So what are the goals of this webinar? So what I like to do is a share of framework, which I have learned from my mentors and refined over time, as I said, which is important to make kind of career decisions. So there's two key points here. First is making career decisions doesn't happen on a daily basis. This happens every two to three to four years. So what ends up happening is, A, there is not a lot of like written kind of instructions or frameworks out there that you can just use learn and kind of use and apply on your own. The second is you just don't get enough time and practice to make these decisions well because you're only doing it once every two or three years, right? So how do you actually make um, these career decisions and build a framework which allows you to do so is kind of the primary goal. What are the non-goals? This is not an, a webinar about how to interview in kind of uh, companies of different sizes. This is not uh, a webinar which talks about the what, are the day, what does a day in the life look like when you're a PM. This is not about uh, what, it, uh, what it means like to be a PM who become, becomes a founder of companies. So we can cover that in, in kind of uh, other web webinars or in other forums. So those are the goals. Um, then quick introduction of myself. So as I said, my name is Ishan Mukherjee. I'm the co-founder of Pixie Labs Inc. Uh, it's an early stage San Francisco based enterprise software company. We're backed by Benchmark and Google. And what we build is an intelligent kind of platform which allows software developers to kind of debug performance issues in large scale distributed applications. I got into this uh, journey um, after being a product manager in both enterprise and consumer context uh, over the past kind of six to seven years. Here's kind of a timeline of, uh, of kind of my progression 
as a PM, and I'll go into a little bit of detail because I'll reference it in each of the sections um, in, in the webinar. So um, grew up in India, was a robotics undergrad student in India, came here for, uh, to, for grad school at MIT. Post grad school, I ended up joining a startup called Kiva Systems. Kiva used to build robots uh, for warehouses. So, so think of these rumor like robots, which used to pick up the shelves, which had the products that you were ordering on amazon.com. So joined as an engineer, became a sales or solutions engineer, essentially sitting between the customer and the technology, help understand kind of how to design and configure the systems, these large scale robotic systems that we were selling to the customers. And then we got acquired by Amazon for about $775 million. Post acquisitions, uh, I learned a lot from the TPMs and Amazon, so technical product managers, about how do you think about building roadmap? How do you think about kind of defining the goals and the specifications of deeply technical systems? So I, I kind of transitioned into Amazon, helping integrate kind of Kiva into the overall kind of Amazon retail um, roadmap. So I was at Amazon for about a year and a half, learned a lot. Uh, and then it came to my second career decision, uh, which, which led me to kind of the Bay Area, join as kind of the first PM, enterprise PM at a company called Premise Data. We were a, a company building a global kind of data acquisition network. Uh, I ended up uh, kind of becoming the head of product, led product design and the growth team. Uh, from a journey from Series B to raising around kind of $50 million at uh, uh, Series C. Uh, post premise, this is my um, kind of first, second, third career decision. I ended up joining a really small team out of Stanford in a company called Lattice Data as a first product person responsible for product discovery and go to market. The company was called, um, was doing kind of machine learned kind of information extraction extraction from unstructured text. So think of reading kind of Barack Obama's uh, Wikipedia article, extracting that Barack is married to Michelle. Uh, we ended up getting acquired by Apple uh, for a healthy amount. Uh, kind of post acquisition, I was the product lead on Siri's knowledge graph. So if you ask kind of Siri or search in Safari about you know, who, is, who is Barack married to, you get this kind of Siri knowledge response, which says Michelle Obama. Um, so I was kind of product lead, uh, kind of supporting the engineering organization, building out this knowledge graph infrastructure, which kind of powers kind of general knowledge Q and A and Siri. So did that it was an amazing experience. And then recently, along with a friend of mine, uh, kind of helped start this company. Uh, my role here is to again like really figure out kind of uh, what product we need to build, and, and there's only one goal: like go hunt product market. So that's kind of my journey. Uh, to summarize, I made a career decision from grad school to join uh, Kiva, kind of, and then an Apple made a decision to come to the Bay Area. That's decision two. From uh, from premise, I decided to join Lattice, which is number three, and then recently left Apple uh, to join um, to help start this company. So like four key decisions over a period of eight years. So every around kind of every two two and a half years, I made these decisions. So what I will walk you through is the framework that I built to help make these decisions. So with that, that's kind of the introduction. Now let's uh, uh, jump into the second section. Um, to talk more about the framework and kind of pardon my branding here, but and I just like to call it as, the, as my North Star. And this is something I learned from uh, a, a bunch of mentors, but uh, specifically, um, Kind of the founder of a uh, co-founder of Lattice, who 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 helped coin this word for me. But the idea is to be very deliberate and think about where you're headed, like what is your destination, and and then what that looks like, and when that happens, the time horizon to achieve that is totally dependent on you. So ideally, you want to have an extremely precise, clear understanding of where you want to be in the long term. So here's where I want to be when I'm 90 years old. Here's when I want to be where I'm 60 years old and, and go back from there. Obviously, it's really hard to do that. However, what I encourage kind of people who that I mentor and I talk to and I encourage myself is really putting in the effort to, to have some North Star, even though 
if it's hazy and imprecise and it's not that long term, having something kind of separates you from 95% of the other, of, of people kind of in your peer group. Like really pushing and like figuring out what your goals are is is important. And this is not like, hey, here's what what you, where do you see yourself five years from now, ten years from now. It is essentially kind of thinking about, hey, where do I where do I want to be? And for me, at every career decision, ultimately that has been the kind of the forcing function to help me kind of jump off the cliff. I'll talk about what I mean by jumping off the cliff. So so the concept of not star is to have a hazy, imprecise, but some fidelity version of where you want to be at a certain time horizon. And again, I'll kind of preface through this whole webinar, I'll talk about like uh, how I use it. So for, for me, for example, my core idea was always to help start a company, a deeply technical company from the ground up. Uh, it was an extremely hazy vision when I was in high school in India, the, that vision has, has kind of refined, got refined over time, but that was the goal. What does that entail? That entailed me learning about technology, me learning about how to build technology, me learning about financing, like all of these different things which are, are part of making um, kind of early stage companies work. So that was my North Star. So, so point number one, really focus on figuring out what the North Star is, even if it's like precise, even if having something is a lot better than, uh, than not having anything. So that's point, point one. Second point is this model that I encourage, which is once you have something, what I realized was inadvertently, kind of subliminally on a daily constant basis, you just start exposing yourself to ideas, networks, people, and opportunities which help kind of refine your understanding of the North Star and help put you in that direction. So I'm not saying that block calendar to go out and network and go to these meetups. What you're actually seeing, like the more you think about it, like you start kind of orienting yourselves on that journey. This is like how your North Star gets refined kind of on a continuous basis. That, so I would just encourage you to like just think about it and just kind of open yourself to serendipity. Like, and then you start kind of really that becomes your playbook. The second is deliberately writing and documenting what your North Star is on a periodic basis. I'm not saying on a weekly basis or, or not on a quarterly basis. Do it at, at a cadence that works for you. For me, it was not kind of um, and have a fixed timeline, but definitely when I had to make a career decision, I spent, put a lot of time time thinking about it. Where do I want to be, uh, and where am where am I where am I at in that journey, and what do I need to learn? So whether whether you're doing it uh, at the end of the year, at the end of the quarter, at some point you have to sit down and document and write down what your north star is. So. First, put in, have a deliberate, put in the deliberate effort of figuring out your North Star. Second, what you realize is on a daily basis, you will just, your playbook becomes uh, this journey of achieving the North Star. And then the third is periodically sit down and document where you need to be. So at a high level, that's not the North Star framework. Now it gets to kind of, I'll walk you through my experience and my journey, and hopefully this is helpful for you. So I talked about the four decision points in my career. Um, was in grad school, decided to go to Kiva. At that point, I was really, I didn't even know what stock options were. However, because I had this North Star signing company, I ended up saying no to a, a sim offers I had out of school, which were joined, where I had an opportunity to join large companies, one in Germany, uh, where I could, I would have built a really solid career, but would, wasn't aligned with where I wanted to be, which was kind of really uh, start a company of my own. So I ended up leaving uh, kind of MIT to join Kiva because it was this nice intersection of technology, startup, and learning. Right. So like the rubric was what do I need to learn? So I ended up joining Kiva, and that kind of started this journey of like, which is the uh, which is working at 
from 400 uh, kind of 400 person company to now we're like a four person company so i went on this reverse trajectory that was decision number one decision number two leaving amazon i had an amazing opportunity to move to seattle really build a strong career i love uh, every aspect of amazon i think at that point it's about impact uh, you, you were on this kind of freight train which is growing at an incredible pace um, I, that was definitely a career. I ended up saying no to it to move to the Bay Area because, again, the rubric was, what do I need to do to get closer to my North Star? I said, I really need to be in the epicenter, learn how to do product, learn how to manage teams, I learn how to build teams, and all of the kind of um, intangibles and all of the skills and functions. So outside of just the engineering part, which are part of a company, I really wanted to experience that. Um, so that's how I ended up making my second decision. There's a key learning there. At that point, I seriously considered kind of going to business school. Coming from India, uh, going to an HBS or a GSP is something that you're supposed to do. And uh, I did apply and I was somewhat successful. I ended up saying no to those as well because I kind of um, ended up being a, uh, with the idea that um, having, having gone to MIT, I do have the benefits. If you think about the MBA, there's a benefit of the network. There definitely is. There's brand name and then there's all the skills associated with it. For me, it was mostly about in two years, to, if, I run, if I do product in an early stage company, will I learn more than going to business school? Um, and I decided to kind of uh, uh, join the startup instead. So decision number two was again that. After I went through kind of a two, two, two and a half year experience at premise, um, I had a kind of a decision to make. Do I, uh, and then I'll talk more in the, in the pros and cons about small companies, about why I had to make a decision. But the idea was, what do I do next? Again, like I asked myself, my North Star is to start a company. Um, can I start one now? Do what? Yes, no. If no, what do I need to learn? At that point, I can explore my options. Again, the idea was now is not the right time to do it on my own. I'm not ready as yet. Let's let's go to a smaller stage company. Really understand, uh, and I want to focus myself on like finding product market fit. So, um, and ended up moving to Lattice, kind of at Apple. They really well. My last decision point. Uh, can I explore a few alternatives and felt like okay, I could either build a really great successful uh, kind of career at Apple or get closer to my now start of starting a company. And with that, ultimately, I took the leap of, of starting a company. So it's a long, long process over a period of eight years, kind of a big career decision every two, two and a half years, kind of going to that path. So hopefully, it under, helps you understand how I thought about kind of what my now started. And more, more important than the decisions I did take, what were all the things I said no to? And why did I say that? And that actually is why the North Star thing helps. And kind of going back forward, I said it'll help you to, um, to take the leap. Here's why it's important. Um, if, if you're an engineer or an analytical person, you, would, you always want to kind of aggregate as much data as you can to build a framework and to make a decision. Like most things in life, you will never have all the data that you need to make this, this, uh, this decision, especially when it comes to your career. So at the end of the day, it is about taking a leap of faith, as people call it. You can take a leap of faith only if you add constraints. There are time constraints. You say, hey, I want to make a decision by this time horizon, or I want to make a decision where they provide a visa. There are these artificial constraints. If you add those in, great. You have to put in constraints. The most effective constraint that I have found was is this aligned with where I want to be? And in most cases, I've just kind of decided to follow that. It may or may not have worked out, but I've been pretty happy with the outcome. Like, hey, this may or may not work out. This is my decision aligned with what I want to get out of life and what makes me and my family happy. And, and, and I've, I've found it to be uh, very comforting. So. To summarize a North Star kind of section, have a plan, put yourself out there, periodically document, and then use, use kind of the framework that you're building to ultimately take the leap of faith, which is your career decision. So 
that's kind of what I mean by the, by working on your nonstop. So uh, hopefully that's, that was helpful. Now let me move on to the third section that a lot of, uh, kind of a lot of my friends and people who I'm, I'm a mentor asked, which is how do you make a decision? And then what is the difference between a small, medium and a large stage company? And again, there's a lot of, of, unlike kind of how to make career decisions, there's a lot of great blogs and people that talk, talk um, a lot about it. So I would encourage you to talk to people, read up and kind of build your own understanding. I can only share what I have learned. So I've had the opportunity to work in, um, in, in Apple which, and Amazon, which are large companies. I've, I had the opportunity to work in kind of uh, companies like Prem, uh, Kiva, which is around 400 people, uh, premise, which is around kind of 40 to uh, 40 people uh, and lattice, which is when I joined about like five. Uh, and then we were at 24 when we got acquired. And now uh, I'm at, uh, at our company Pixie Labs and we were the first two people. So we're about nine people now. So I've had an opportunity to work uh, in uh, companies of different sizes. And in parallel, obviously being in the community, I've learned a lot from people at, at, at Twitter and Slack and, and Uber and the likes. Uh, so here's what kind of how I think about it. First is you have to deeply understand what a PM does. The second is what are the pros and cons of, of joining a small, medium or large company? So first, here's how I think about kind of the definition of a product manager. Then there's a large myriad of definitions out there. Uh, but ultimately, there's, uh, there's one commonality across all PMs. A product manager sits between the customer and the technology. And what that means for a specific company is very specific to the sector, to the, to the maturity, to the engineering org, to the type of product. Well, one thing is consistent. You're always the person sitting between the customer and the technology. So that's the number one uh, thing that I talk to PMs about. Are you empathetic to the end customer? Deeply understand the market that you operate in? And are you empathetic to the engineers? And deeply understand the technology from a systems level. You don't necessarily need to be an ex-engineer who un understands kind of software development um, in detail, but you do need to understand, um, have a system that will understand. So A, you can work with them effectively and B, can really think about technology and how it manifests themselves in terms of products and platforms in a strategic manner. So that's my definition of a PM. Every company has a kind of quote unquote cute definition of what a PM does, won't go into detail. Ultimately, you're responsible to sit between the market and the customer. So in that construct, I, I think the number one thing that PMs look for is having impact. Having impact by shipping great products. I think that's kind of the clearest articulation of, of what their kind of end product is. So using the definition and their kind of goals, here's what I think the pros and cons are for the small, medium, and large companies. So first, the small stage companies. So if you're joining a startup, um, the pros are the pace. You're, you're going like crazy. Uh, you get to do a lot. So there's a lot of exposure to breadth. So pace and breadth is what, what makes it so exciting from an impact perspective. You're working on zero to one problems and you're doing that at pace, which is unmatched at any other company. The second thing is the reward. There's a lot of risk, but the reward is that you are part of a successful company, like, like an Uber or Lyft or, um, or MongoDB or Elasticsearch if you're an enterprise, right? So the, so the pros are pace, breadth, and just the reward that you get uh, by, uh, by taking the risk of joining, uh, and joining an early stage company. The cons, the cons are the lack of structure. So in most cases, you're probably, if you're the f first of the few PMs, um, definition of what your mandate is, is not clear. Most people uh, revel, revel in that and, and, uh, 
and 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 that's what they look for they like the ambiguity but for, for a lot of people uh, that's something that they uh, it doesn't kind of help them grow so the first thing i talk to people is is if you're early in your career if you're looking for mentorship and guidance so early stage companies uh, might not be the right thing for you that's con number 1 uh, con number 2 is is with risk everybody can tell you that startups are risky that they might uh they might not work that is quite intuitive but the core thing to ask yourself is are you joining a pre product market fit company or a post product market fit company if you're joining a pre product market fit company and if you're the first product person and you're responsible to find product market fit don't join the company the founder is responsible to find product market fit So I would always have a nuanced understanding of where that company lies. So I would say those are the pros and cons of a small company, the mid-stage company. So think of some a company which is in a pre pre IPO, growing like crazy. Like think of Slack two or three years back. The pros you still are moving really fast. You still have you have a ton of impact, probably a lot more impact than if you're in a startup.、Um, and then you're starting to if they have really good product leaders who build the product function uh, you have really good mentors so i know a lot of great companies who have kind of product leaders who got trained in google or facebook and they're the ones who are building on the product teams you actually get a lot、uh, a lot of good mentorship the cons cons are kind of like you not in an early stage company You are somewhere between being super structured and being a lot of ambiguity, or somewhere in between, right? So you have you have early stages of process. A lot of people are getting hired, so there's a lot of kind of organizational like flux happening. I don't think it's a con; it's just something that you should be present about. A lot of people do really well in that kind of one to ten phase, not zero to one, not ten to like a million, the one to ten phase where they they come in.、Uh, Like、have have a real real impact there. So these are all intuitive things. Like the main thing that I want to talk about. One thing is, John. Like if you're interested in kind of mid stage companies, look for who who you're going to work for. Because if you have somebody who you can, who can give you great mentorship, that is probably a priceless once in a career opportunity. Joining a successful, high-growth mid-stage company with somebody who is willing to invest in you. So, this is my nugget on kind of mid-stage companies, large companies. It's all about impact. I I won't even go into the cons. It's companies are large, a lot of process, again intuitive stuff. It is about the impact, and is that impact kind of career-defining for you, right? If are you at Amazon working on Alexa? Are you、uh, in Google working on search? Are you on Facebook working on WhatsApp or Messenger? Like, if you're working in a large organization but you're having the impact which is gigantic, that is all that matters. There's a lot of negatives associated with large companies, a lot of other positive, but ultimately it's about is the impact. Career defining for you. So that's kind of how I broadly talk about kind of the pros and cons. To summarize, small companies be very, very nuanced in your understanding of where they are with product market fit. If they're pre-product market fit, and if it's your job to find it, don't don't join the company. If they're close to it and are scaling, understand the risks, but take it if it's the right for you. For mid-stage company. See if you can get great mentors. If you can, it's an amazing opportunity.、Uh, something that I encourage a lot of people. If it's a large company, really think about the impact that you want to have. If you have that, everything else will follow. If you don't, it not might be the best fit for you. So that's kind of how I talk about kind of small and high growth companies. It's mostly based on my experience. So hopefully, this kind of webinar was helpful for you.、Um, Feel free to reach out to me、uh, on LinkedIn or or here on this forum if you have any other questions.、Um, I like to summarize、uh, kind of、uh, in most of my communications. So the first one is when you think about kind of the North Star framework for yourself and what that means for you. Think about one thing. Have a goal. It's okay if it's not precise. 
constantly keep refining it and periodically document it. And making, and then once you have that, you have your destination, the path uh, that you get there. Here's point number two. If this is mapped out, you increasingly care less about the North Star, but enjoying the process. You start to love the process. And doing that is what kind of actually gives at least me joy, not daily, but when I'm down thinking about, all right, I'm heading in the right direction. I, I'm, I'm on the journey, I'm getting there. So um, that's kind of point two. The third thing, do realize that when you're making career decisions, these decisions come across once every two to three to four to five years. They don't come, come, come down often. If you go into them, without a framework, you are exposing yourself to, to make kind of suboptimal decisions. So I would encourage you be deliberate, actively build a framework because once you are making a decision, it's up to you. You have to make the best decision, which is the best for you and your family. And if you don't build the framework, um, you might give up on time, which is the most important currency. So hopefully that was helpful. Uh, all the best with everything. Keep it touch. See you guys.